Hi, my name is Monica and I'm a member of the Toronto Energy Coalition. The TEC is a group of concerned citizens that would like to draw your attention to a very important issue that affects all residents of Toronto. I'm on the east side of the city, down by the waterfront, just steps from Cherry Beach. This whole area has been promised to the people as a public space and has been cleaned up of industry for the past couple of decades. Now that intention seems to be changing. Site preparation is going on over there and it'll be called the Portland's Energy Centre, a large, brand new, natural gas-fired electrical power plant that will cost the Ontario government over 700 million taxpaying dollars to build. The Ontario government is concerned with Toronto's need for energy and figures that this is the best solution to the problem. But really, there are better ways of addressing these needs. Ways that are cheaper, will preserve our air quality and won't reindustrialize our waterfront. We like to think the provincial government is looking out for our health and welfare first and foremost. But with the construction of this plant, that's certainly not the case. The plant will emit greenhouse gases, toxins, fine particulates and even more smog into Toronto's already jeopardized airspace. Construction of this plant is going ahead without a full environmental assessment. However, an environmental report was passed. An environmental report is self-generated and requires no public input, whereas a full environmental assessment takes into consideration the surrounding community. A full environmental assessment will allow for public consultation and consideration of alternatives. The Toronto Energy Coalition is pushing for a full environmental assessment and you can help. Please insist on a full environmental assessment of the Portland's Energy Center, and you can find out how to do it on our website. You know, it's not too late to help keep Toronto clean and save our waterfront for future generations. That's a brief description of why we'd like you to stand up and take action. But don't just take it from me. Have a listen to some environmental experts and political leaders tell you more. My biggest concern is, is health and air quality and um, actually global warming. And I'm very worried about the future that we're leaving for our children and grandchildren. I think it's very clear it's a failure of imagination. You know, if you look at the green bin program dealing with garbage, Torontonians grabbed it. They desperately want to do the right environmental thing. That's a value Torontonians hold close to their heart. So I know if we made conservation much easier with respect to electricity, that's the way we should be dealing with Toronto's energy needs. Imagine what would happen if the province was showing the same kind of leadership on conservation and demand management. That's where we should be going in this city and that's why I don't support the Portland's energy plan. The idea that we would now start opening up new emission sources for major power plants that aren't a peak efficiency, aren't top of the line, aren't the, sol the real solution for energy problems, uh, it, just, it just has me questioning where our city is going. It's taken a very long time for this neighborhood to rec reclaim the land, make it a, a healthy neighborhood. Um, we want to continue with that route, but if we're going to go on this route and reindustrialize the, the space, then all of that hard work over two decades now is just going to go down the tubes. This is a huge, imposing new industrial structure on our waterfront. It's the reindustrialization of our waterfront, not the revitalization of our waterfront. As people know, the City of Toronto has been trying to redevelop the waterfront, make it clean and green, revitalize it so it becomes a, a center of culture and a center of recreation. Uh, going back to an old-fashioned industrial use on this strip of land makes no sense whatsoever. We've learned from the environmental screening report that gas is not as clean as people are led to believe. Natural gas power plants emit ultrafine particulates that, that go deep into the lungs and cause problems that aren't entirely known and may be very dangerous. Most people know somebody with asthma, could be a child. For every person that dies there are many, many more that are either uh, admitted to a hospital for breathing difficulty or confined to the house because their, uh, their only solution for smog days is to stay indoors. There's children living in this neighborhood. There's schools within a two mile radius of that plant. Like, let's just do an assessment and see what the repercussions are. The concern in this neck of the woods is, is threefold. There's obviously the environmental concern around air quality and what it's going to do to the water because the, as, as a reporter who covered this issue at Queen's Park, I know that there won't be scrubbers on the smokestack and that presents all kinds of environmental problems. It also uh, configures the plant in such a way that no other plant like it in North America is configured. It's going to be one of the dirtier burns that we have. The fundamental issue for residents in this part of the city is what it does for other waterfront plants. If industrial use can be justified over there, 
can be justified over here. I think it's not good enough just to be against something, but we have to propose the alternatives. Find 550 megawatts in another way. And I'm so happy to say that we have found more than 550 megawatts in renewables, in conservation, in load management, in microgeneration. Given that we have alternatives to this plant that would allow us to provide ourselves with cooling and with lighting, uh, with far less environmental impact, it represents unnecessary pollution of the environment. This location has been the promise of the citizens of Toronto to undergo a revitalization, to become a people place, uh, a landscape that we would all want to come to, to our water's edge. The opportunities abound along here to not only provide that, but to provide energy. Now in the city there is a lot of opportunities for producing power locally. We have deep lake water cooling off our shores that already demonstrates a better way of providing cooling without using electricity. We have the opportunity of wind energy along our waterfront. We can store energy in batteries in large scale. There are many ways that we can reduce our energy consumption through conservation. We need to start taking a look at these things as a neighborhood challenge and neighborhood by neighborhood address new power needs but also pursue new conservation goals. But fundamentally, we start industrializing the waterfront with pollutants. Neighborhoods right across Toronto are at risk and we can't allow that to happen. Once the gas plant is built, there will be no incentive for conservation. There will be no incentive for renewables. The, the investment will have been made. There will be every motivation to recoup that cost and the only way they are going to recoup that cost is through energy sales. I think it's fundamentally wrong that this plant doesn't have a full environmental assessment. It's the only way to properly assess the options before us, the options before us in this community and in Ontario and make the right choice. We have the opportunity in Toronto to make our voices louder because we have an overwhelming uh, consensus of people that are active in the community that want this plant closed. Write a letter to your MP, write a letter to Premier McGuinty, write a letter to the Minister of the Environment, write a letter to the Minister of Energy and express your concerns. You know, I remember years ago they were proposing to put in a huge expressway uh, from the 401 right down through the centre of Toronto. It would have gone down through through uh, uh, the annex and, and down uh, through Kensington Market and, and, and Chinatown. Uh, it would have been a big trench. It would have been terrible. And everybody said you can't stop it. In fact, the highway was already under construction, but the citizens of Toronto stopped it. They all said we couldn't close the Hearn Generating Station or the Commissioner Street uh, garbage incinerator or the Ashbridge's Bay sewage uh, burning plant. All of those were closed by the citizens, as was the lead smelter. The fact is that we can make a difference, even if it looks like it's an uphill battle. And what you need to do is get involved. Uh, this website uh, will show you how to get involved in this issue, and the more vo voices we have, the better.